Screen Directors Playhouse, stars Cary Grant, Betsy Drake, production Shadow of a Doubt, director Alfred Hitchcock. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you five nights a week by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on this first hour-long program of a new Screen Director's Playhouse series, we once again applaud the art and artistry of the screen director. In this case, Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. In many excellent creations for the screen, he has earned the title of Master of Suspense. May we again prove his mastery tonight as we present our adaptation of Mr. Hitchcock's Shadow of a Doubt, starring Cary Grant as Uncle Charlie and Betsy Drake as Charlie. Somebody hear me. I'm suffocating. Oh, please. Please. Mother. Father. <coughs> In the garage. Uncle Charlie. <coughs> oh, please help me. Somebody. I'm in my own garage, please, in my own home, in Santa Rosa. And I think perhaps I'm going to die. The blue poison gas is coming out of the exhaust of the automobile. The doors of the the car are locked, and I can't turn the motor off. Help me, please. And the doors of the garage are jammed shut. Uncle Charlie! And I think... Uncle Charlie, let me out! I'm going to die. I was a little girl, we talked like that. Uncle Charlie and I. Uncle Charlie. I'm his namesake, Charlotte. Charlie. I think I loved him more than anyone. Now I'm in here and I'll die here. And he's outside and he's smiling and handsome. Just like when he came to visit us. Just a little while ago. Uncle Charlie. I'm so excited. So is your mother, Charlie. You'd think I was waiting for my fiancé or something. Anne? Yeah? Don't you think it's time to stop reading that book? No. But he's almost here. That's all right. I've got my reading schedule. Uncle Charlie will understand. He'll understand you're a spoiled brat. Ha, ha. Mother says he was spoiled himself. Mother says he was the youngest, like me. Look, Pops, the train stopped. There he is. Charlie! Well, Charlie! Ch- my, my, you're a beauty. Charles. Well, Joe, how are you? Where's Emmy? Fixing dinner, but Anne's here. Hi, Uncle Charlie. Oh, hi. I bet you don't even remember me. Mm, sort of. Do you read much? Well, I used to. I read on the schedule. Two books a week. Uncle Charlie, are you all right? I certainly fit as a fiddle, that's me. Oh, well, when you got off the train... The way the porter helped you, I thought you might be sick or something. Do I look sick? You look wonderful. Well, let's go. Emmy's waiting. Here, I'll take this bag. 
Just follow Ed and me to the car. I'll take this bag. No, you don't. That's the heaviest. That's why I want to carry it for you. You know what you are, Uncle Charlie. What am I, Charlie? A miracle. Me? Whose miracle? Mine. The way you came to visit us. It's as if you knew how much I needed you. Uh, perhaps I needed you too, Charlie. The day we got your wire, I was thinking what a rut our family was in. Ah, but Charlie, it's good to have a family again. You don't know how good. It's good to have an uncle again. Uncle Charlie. Charles, this will be your room. Oh, that bag was kind of heavy. Emmy, it looks wonderful. Mm, my baby brother, rich and handsome. That's my uncle. Oh, quiet, you. Now, I'd better get settled here. Oh, Charles, don't hmm? put your hat on the bed. Oh, I'm superstitious? No, but, well, there's no use inviting trouble, is there? There's no trouble here. Nothing can touch me here in Santa Rosa. Why, what an odd thing to say. Is it, Charlie? Mm, it's a very odd world outside. Not sweet and fine like here. You don't know how lucky you are. Charles, it's... Beautiful. I just opened the package. What package, dear? A wristwatch. Oh. Charles brought me a wristwatch. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> just a few presents, Anne. There's one for you downstairs oh. and one for Anne, too. Charles, you shouldn't have. But I'm dying to see what it is. Yeah, I've got something for you, too, Charlie. Oh, I don't want anything. Really, I mean that. But I want you to have it. You made us all happy. All of us, all at the same time. And me most of all. That's enough. I am. To Charlie from Uncle Charlie. Please take it. I'm so glad Mom named me after you. She thinks we're alike, you know. Now, if you gave me anything, that would spoil it. Well, then I'll have to open the box for you. We're not just uncle and niece. We're something special. Yeah, give me a hand, Charlie. It's as if we were sort of like twins. I know you. I know there's something inside of you nobody knows. Something nobody knows? There's something that's oh so secret and wonderful. I'll find it, too. Oh. Here's a gift, Charlie. Look at your hand now. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's a good emerald, a real one. Here, I'll take the ring off, just this once. I want to hold it against the light. You've had something engraved on it. What? What did you say? There's letters. It's awfully faint. To T.S. from B.R. Uh, Charlie, let me have that. No, I said I'd take it off just this once. Must be somebody's initials. Made somebody else happy, too. <laughs> the jeweler cheated me. It doesn't matter. I like it this way. Just the way I like you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I hope it makes you happy. Even happier than the person who wore it before you. Whoever she was. Now, uh, isn't dinner ready yet? Well fed, Uncle Charlie? Fed to the gunnels. Then you just sit here. Here's Father's paper. He just went out for some tobacco. Now, I've got to help Mother with the dishes. Come on, Anne. Wait till I finish this chapter. Oh, never mind. She never takes her nose out of that book. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, do you expect me to make conversation? Oh, oh, not as long as there's an evening paper to read. I'm glad to see you're a reader. It keeps your brain from getting fat. Here, Uncle Charlie, to settle your dinner. Mm. Mm. Smells alcoholic. Thank you. Just some wine. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, you go ahead and read your paper. If you'd care to have a discussion afterwards, I'll be glad to... Uncle Charlie, you spilled your drink. Uncle Charlie. Mm. Oh, what? Oh, oh, the wine. Are you all right? You don't look good. Uh, it's nothing. I just had an accident. Here. Some of it got on your paper. I'll take Leave the out. paper alone. Well, I was oh, just Charlie, trying something to... crash? Oh, Charlie, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was very clumsy, the glass. Now, oh. don't go getting all embarrassed. Uh-oh, it's on Father's paper. Uh, it's just this one page. I'll tear it out. Oh, page nine, he probably won't even know the difference. Here, 
I'll throw this part away. Gee, Charlie, did he ever get sore? Help me pick up this glass. He was sore, all right. Well, maybe he was scared. That's what it's like in books. When people get scared, they usually get sore, too. It's me, Charlie. I brought you some water for your night table. Oh, come in. Uh, I was just looking out the window. It's very peaceful, your town. I'll put it here. Thank you, Charlie. Pleasant dreams. Uncle Charlie, hmm? I know a secret about you. You do? And you don't know I know. What do you mean? I know there was something in the evening paper about you. Go on. You tore it out when you spilled the wine on it, but you didn't throw it away. Charlie, that wasn't about me. Oh, I'll bet you're just being modest. But I'll find out. It's still in your pocket, right here. Take your hand oh, away. I just want to... Take re- your hand away. Uncle Charlie. You're hurting me. Oh, Charlie. Charlie, forgive me. I, I was just fooling. It's nothing. It's just some ugly gossip about a friend. Not for you to read. I was pretty silly, I guess. The paper... It was still wet with the wine. It's on my hand. Oh, I am sorry, Charlie. Forgive me. Of course. Good night, Uncle Charlie. So ends the first act of our Screen Director's Playhouse production of Shadow of a Doubt, starring Betsy Drake and Cary Grant. It's been called everything from the world's best babysitter to a magic carpet. It can turn a furnished room into a palace, a house into a home. You think that's exaggerated talk about television? Well, you ought to see the thousands of fan letters sent in by RCA Victor owners. So many, so very many of them telling how much television itself has meant to them personally as well as how much they like their RCA Victor sets. I don't know why we waited so long. If we'd only known what we were missing, we'd have bought our set long ago. Why not tune yourself and your family into this great new entertainment? Stop in at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and get the details. And you may very well find that it will cost you a lot less than you think to own one of the 18 beautiful new RCA Victor television receivers. But tomorrow's the day to do it. Never has any home appliance been in greater demand. And never before such demand for one brand, RCA Victor. Now, back to the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Shadow of a Doubt, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. voice isn't a part of me anymore. It's in the middle of a vast space, sobbing and screaming. My lungs are sucking at the carbon monoxide. And a nursery rhyme makes a crazy little song. I'm suffocating. I think of Uncle Charlie and his hand hard on my wrist, hurting me. You shouldn't be shouting. Uncle Charlie's still asleep. Well, I was so excited, I forgot. We're celebrities, Charlie. Are we? Why? Well, I'm not quite sure myself. But the young man from the survey is in the front room. Mother, what young man? What survey? Well, he's being sent around the country by some kind of um, institute or committee. And he has to pick out average families and ask them questions. Uh, Excuse me for interrupting, but I couldn't help overhearing. This is my daughter, Charlie. Charlie? 
For Charlotte. Oh. Oh, my name is Jack Gray of Miss Newton. I'm with the National Public Survey, and I assure you it's perfectly legitimate. And I, I asked your mother if we could make an analysis of your family, you know, pictures and a few thousand questions. It's all very scientific. Charlie, dear, don't frown like that. Well, I, I promise, Miss Newton, cross my heart, I'll be hardly any bother. Oh, Charlie, it's 10.30. I promised your uncle we'd wake him. I'll do it, Mom. Oh, and nice to have met you, Mr. Graham. Welcome to our household. Well, thanks, Miss Newton. Come in. Oh, good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Uncle Charlie. You know what? Well, We're going to be interviewed. Charlie... Uh... I hate newspaper reporters. Not by a newspaper, it's for a survey. Survey? One of those things where somebody asks you a lot of questions. What, what kind of questions? I don't know. M Mr. Graham knows all about it, though. Graham? Who's Graham? The survey man. Do you know him, Charlie? No, he's from out of town. Why? Oh, Charlie, now why do you let strangers into your home like this? They're probably picking your family for the all-American soccer list. You mean our family? It's perfectly all right. Survey. Charlie, I, I wonder why he picked this family. Just too average for words, I guess. Can't you get rid of him? Why? He's rather good looking. Well, he's going to ask us a lot of stupid questions. He can leave me out of it. Oh, all right, Grumpy. We'll ignore you. Oh, I'll have to put some makeup on. He's going to take pictures. Pictures? Here? Yes, he's... Charlie. Get that man out of this house. Well, Uncle Charlie, there's nothing to no, get excited about. I've never about. been photographed in my life, and I don't want to be. Oh, yes, you have. Never, Charlie. Don't you remember? I've got the picture here. It's somewhere in my drawer. Oh, here it is. Now, do you remember? Let me see that. I was just a youngster. Good morning, Charles. Mom, I was just showing Uncle Charlie his picture. Oh, let me see it, dear. Oh... I remember that. It was taken the Christmas you got your bicycle, Charles, just before your accident. What accident? Your Uncle Charles didn't know how to work the bicycle very well, and he skidded into a streetcar. Oh, dear. His skull was fractured. We thought he was going to die. I'm glad he didn't. He was laid up for so long. And then afterwards, there was no holding him, just as if he'd used up all the rest he'd ever need. He was always in mischief after that. Does it ever bother you, Uncle Charlie? Well, he used to have terrible headaches. Do you still have them? Sometimes, Charlie. Sometimes there's a... What's the use of looking backwards? It's today I worry about. Well, if it's today you're worried about, you'd better be having your breakfast. Right. I want to get the house straightened away for that, Mr. Graham. I guess Charlie told you about him. Yes, she did. <laughs> First time I've seen you without a book. That's because I'm meditating. Oh, well, front porch is a fine place to meditate. I guess you've been all over the world, haven't you, Uncle Charlie? Most of it, Anne. But this is best of all. Here comes Charlie from the marketing. Mm. Who's that with her? Mrs. Potter. She's a widow. Hi, Uncle Charlie. I want you to meet a neighbor. Mrs. Potter, this is that man I'm always talking about, Mr. Oakley. Uh, how do you do, Miss Potter? Oh, uh, it's Mrs. Mr. Oakley. Oh. Can I help you with those packages? Oh, would you? I don't use the car since my dear husband went to his reward. Oh, well, Here. A young woman like you should drive a car, Mrs. Potter. Perhaps I can teach you. Oh, would you, Mr. Oakley? I'd be so grateful. Well, where do you live, Mrs. Oh, it's just down the street. Oh. Well, I better get these packages into the house. Going yet? Here comes that man again. Hello there. Oh, hello, Mr. Graham. I see you have your camera. Yeah, ready for work. Here, Anne, take these bundles. Oh, I got them. Ah, uh, now let's see, Miss Newton. There are uh, five in your family. Four. Uh, but your mother said five. Well, she counted my uncle Charlie. He's just visiting. Oh, well, where's he from? The east. Is he in business? Yes. May I ask what kind? I don't know, just business. He's pretty well off. Uh, will I be able to talk to him? I don't think so. He's not interested in the survey. And he doesn't like to have his picture taken. Charlie, is that Mr. Graham? Oh, yes, it is. Well, please come in. Well, now, 
How do we begin? Uh, with a few pictures, I think. We're doing some research on kitchen organization. Oh, my goodness. I was just baking a cake. Our kitchen's a mess. Well, that's all right with me. Well, not with me. I won't have a bunch of total strangers accuse me of having a messy kitchen. I'll clean up first. You know, Mr. Graham, you picking us as an average family. I'm not sure I like that. Why not? I'm from a pretty average family myself. As average as are? Averager. <laughs> well... I still don't think I like being an average girl. I don't think you're average at all. Why, thank you, Mr. Graham. I'm glad you didn't see me the day before yesterday. I was way down in the dumps. And then Uncle Charlie came. Oh, is that him coming up the walk now? That's him. All sunburned and knife. Please, Miss Newton, if you'll just step away from the camera. You're not going to take a picture of him. Just this once, Miss Newton. I'm sure he won't mind. Hello, Charlie. I don't like to be photographed. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you for that plate. I told him, Uncle Charlie. Um, this is Mr. Graham from the survey. I assume that. The plate, please, Mr. Graham. Here it is. Thank you. No hard feelings, I hope, Mr. Graham. No hard feelings. Mr. Graham, I'm ready for you now. Oh, uh, Mrs. Newton, I I'm sorry, but I just remembered I have an appointment with the mayor. The research business. But I have a favor to ask you before I call again. Why, of course, Mr. Graham. Uh, could I borrow your daughter for this evening uh, just to show me around town? Well, which one? Charlie or Anne? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, Charlie. <laughs> well, if Charlie doesn't mind. Does Charlie mind? No, Charlie doesn't mind. <laughs> Fine. Pick you up at 6.30? If you're through talking to the mayor by then. Uh, yeah, I'll be through. it, the Grand Tour. Oh, it's a delightful town, but my feet are tired. They call this park the square. Then why is it built like a circle? Oh, well, I'm trying. Come on, Charlie, let's, uh, let's sit down. Once upon a time, Charlie, I'll bet you smiled. Don't you like to smile anymore? Jack, when we started out tonight, I hoped you'd tell me. Tell you what? This is a small town, small enough so that a lot of us know the mayor. That's nice. There was a little ache in the back of my mind about this survey business of yours. My Uncle Charlie thought it was strange. I see. So when you said you had an appointment with the mayor, I phoned his office. Never heard of me. No. So you were lying. I don't like lies. Well, I'm found out. Why did you do it? What do you want from us? I had my reasons. Perhaps the police would be interested in your reasons. I, I, I wouldn't go to the police if I were you, Charlie. Why not? Because I'm a policeman. You? But for heaven's sakes, what do you want at our house? Charlie, I came here from the east to find a man. He's very dangerous. Well, what has that got to do with us? Think, Charlie. How much do you know about your Uncle Charlie? He's my mother's brother. He... Well, what's he got to do with this? He might be the man we're looking for. Uncle Charlie? Well, I never heard of anything so ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's a strong possibility. There's another fellow in the east, another suspect. The police are hunting for him now. He might be the guy. And then again, it might be your uncle. How can you say a thing like that? What reason do you have? I followed your uncle out here. I followed him from... Followed him? Do you know what kind of a man he is? How can you possibly suspect him I of anything? I suspect him. I have my reasons. For your sake, I hope I'm wrong. I could be. I don't even know what the man I'm searching for looks like. As far as we know, he's never had a photograph taken. There's a chance your uncle is our man, Charlie. A good chance. If... If it were true, he'd be arrested. Yes, he would. My mother. It would kill her. No, it can't be. There must be some mistake. No mistake, Charlie. And I promise you this. If your uncle Charlie is the guilty man, I'll get him out of town quietly. He isn't guilty. I know he isn't. But you'll have to help me. Give me your word you'll help me get him out of town, Charlie. It's going to be so funny when you find out that you're wrong. Charlie. Charlie, come back. Why, Charlie. Mrs. Potter. Do you have last night's newspaper? Why, yeah, yes, of course. May I see it, please? Oh, of 
course. Can I get you some tea? No, nothing. Just the paper. Why, it's right over here, dear, on the couch. Oh, it was so gracious of your uncle to help me today. My, but he's a The paper, Mrs. Potter. Oh, oh yes, here, here you are, dear. You know, I don't believe a single man has been in this house for years. Oh, and charming. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I wasn't hearing Mrs. Potter anymore, and my own voice was echoing in my mind, echoing cold and lonely and afraid. Killer escapes. Nationwide search underway for Strangler, the three rich women. The whereabouts of the so-called Merry Widow murderer is still unknown today. Escaping from a police net drawn tightly about the northeastern states, the killer is still at large. The most recent of his three victims, all of them wealthy widows, was Mrs. Bruce Rogers, the former Thelma Shenley. Charlie, what is it? Thelma Shenley. Bruce Rogers. To T.S. From B.R. The Ring. The Ring. Ha, ha, ha. Hickory, dickory, duck. Are you, Charlie? Are you? The third act of the screen director's playhouse presentation of Shadow of a Doubt continues in just a minute. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's an incredibly fast way to ease the pain. It's Anison, a way countless numbers of people have found superior. Anison acts so promptly to relieve pain. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in convenient tablet form. Thousands of persons have been introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them and everyone can have the benefit of their incredibly fast action. So if you want to relieve the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means try Anison. On this guarantee, if the first few Anison tablets do not give you all the relief you want as fast as you want it, return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. I'll spell the name for you. A N A. C-I-N. Easy to take Anison tablets come in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at your druggists today. Listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of five great radio shows that are brought to you five nights a week by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison, Kalinos, Bicidol, and other fine drug products. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Shadow of a Doubt, starring Betsy Drake and Cary Grant, will continue after a short pause for station identification. Stay tuned to your local station on NBC. third act of the screen director's playhouse production of Shadow of a Doubt, starring Cary Grant as Uncle Charlie and Betsy Drake as Charlie. This garage will be my place of dying. I can't hear the cries for help anymore or the pounding on the door. And that's because I, Charlie Newton, have ceased to move. The gas, 
The exhaust poison from the automobile is heavy and warm. There are two pains. One is in my right ankle, a hot pain, and I know I must have sprained it in my struggle for escape. The other pain is here, inside me. It's the pain that comes when love goes away. It was the second night of Uncle Charlie's visit when I read the newspaper story. The Merry Widow Murderer. The three-time slayer of women. Uncle Charlie. You'd think I wouldn't be able to sleep that night, but I did sleep. A drug flight into fantasy. And I slept through the night and throughout most of the next day. Slept and dreamed. <laughs> You've always been my favorite, you know. That's why Mother gave me your name. Why, you're just a little girl again. No, I'm not. I'm grown. I'm grown up, and I know who you are. I liked you better as a little girl, Charlie. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. There was blood on your hand. It was only wine. Blood. From the newspaper. Blood. The clock struck one. And down he run. Hickory dickory. You killed them, Uncle Charlie. Just a mouse. Three women. It was only a mouse. I loved you and you're a murderer. Oh, you mustn't, Charlie. You mustn't. Please, Charlie. (laughs) You mustn't. Charlie, don't cry. Wake up. Charlie. What? Who is it? It's Uncle Charlie. I heard you crying. Oh. Oh, Are you having a nightmare? Yes. Did I? Say anything? No, just cried. Your forehead is damp. Please, don't touch me. Why, what's wrong? It's... it's nothing. But you act as if you're afraid of me. Why should you be afraid? It it was... it was the dream. You shouldn't have bad dreams. Not you, Charlie. Not you, of all people. I'll be all right now. Will you? Yes. I'll be all right. Then good night, young Charlie. Good night. Charlie. Charlie. Hmm? Oh, good morning, Pops. It's not morning. It's dinner time. You slept all through the day. Your mother told me to wake you up. Tell her I'll be right down. You consume more energy reading books than anybody I ever knew. Here. You aren't eating, Charlie. Not hungry? I guess it's just too much sleep. And dreaming a perfect nightmare. Why, what about, dear? Uncle Charlie. It was all mixed up with blood and killing. Charlotte! You were on a train, Uncle Charlie. And I felt you were running away from something. Charlotte, I insist that you... When I saw you on the train, I felt terribly happy and... Go on. Why, That's just, all. Just imagine such nightmares about your uncle. How could you feel happy with him going away? I was just telling you the dream, Mother. I don't want you to leave ever, Charles. This is your home. I want it to be your home. You were gone for so many years. Now that we're together again, I don't want you to leave ever. Please, Charles, please don't go away. You won't, will you? Do you want me to stay, Charlie? I want my family to be happy. Then I won't go. Not for a while. If it's all right with you, Joe. Of course it is. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Drink your milk, Anne. Oh. You heard your mother. Oh, Charles, I almost forgot. I promised our women's club that you'd talk to the ladies. You Mm. know, just a little speech at our meeting tomorrow night. Really? What What am I going to talk about? You know so many things, Uncle Charlie. So many strange things. That shouldn't be hard. What sort of an audience would they be, Emmy? Oh, 
women like myself, busy with our homes. Yes. Women keep busy in towns like this. In the cities, it's different. Cities are full of women. Idle, middle-aged widows. Husbands dead. Husbands who spent their lives making money to give to their useless wives. Uncle Charlie. And then the husbands die. And then what do they do, these useless women? You see them in the hotels. The best hotels. Drinking the money, eating the money, smelling of money. Horrible, fat, faded, greedy women. Useless, pointless. They shouldn't even be allowed to exist. They give nothing and they take everything. But they're alive. They're human beings. Are they, Charlie? Are they human or just fat, wheezing animals? And what happens to animals when they get too fat and too old? Well, for heaven's sake, Charles. Don't go talking like that in front of the women's club. Or the idea. <laughs> <laughs> They'd run us out of town. Yeah. Well, we couldn't have that, could we? Oh, Charles, that nice Mrs. Potter is going to be there, too. She was asking me about you, you know. That nice Mrs. Potter. Mm -hmm. Why, Charlie. I'm sorry, Mother. Father. I'm going outside. I can't stand it in here. What's wrong with her? Maybe she's in love with that Mr. Graham, the survey man. Anne. And you go out. No, no, her. I'll go. <laughs> you finish your dinner. Charlie? Charlie. I want to talk to you. You're hurting my arm. I said I want to talk to you. We'll go in here. No. It's just a cocktail bar. Sit down here. A ginger ale and a brandy, please. Why did you bring me here? Oh, now, Charlie. What's wrong? What's come between us? Look, we're not just uncle and niece. You said so yourself. We're more like twins. Charlie, that man, that Jack Graham, what did he tell you? He's got nothing to do with it. He didn't tell me anything. And I told him nothing. What could you have told him? What you are. Uncle Charlie, how could you? How could you do things like that? Like what? You're my mother's brother. I loved you because I thought you were more worthy of love than anybody in the whole world. Charlie, what do you know? Take your ring back. T.S. from B.R. To Thelma Shenley from Bruce Rogers. I'm sorry it ever touched my skin. Oh, sit down. Sit down, Charlie. You want to run home. Run to your safe little nest. Run away from me and everything I stand for. Well, what do I stand for? Do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to say the word? You can't. Because you don't understand. You don't know. There's so much you don't know. You think you're the clever little girl. But you're an ordinary little girl in an ordinary little town. You're safe and secure from everything except stupid dreams. And I brought you those, didn't I? I didn't even know there were men like you in the world. How do you know what the world is like? Do you know that the world is a foul sty? Do you know if you ripped the fronts off houses, you'd find swine? The world is a hell! What does it matter? What happens in it? You're sick, Uncle Charlie. You're really sick. Wake up, Charlie. Use your wits. Learn something. I've learned enough to... If my mother knew, it would kill her. Then you love your mother. Let's go, Charlie. <laughs> It's been a shock. Let it wear off. Here's the house. I want to go in now. Uh, just a minute. Listen, Charlie. The same blood flows through our veins, yours and mine. You've got to understand. Before I came here, I was the end of my rope. Yet you came here to this house reeking... No, don't say that, Charlie. You'll do it again. That Mrs. Potter. I know what you've been No, thinking. never again. Oh. Oh, I'm so tired. There's an end to the running a man can do. You'll never know what it's like to be so tired. I hope I never do. This is my last chance, Charlie. Give it to me. 
Graham doesn't know. Not for sure. There's a man in the East. If they get him, I'll... I'll be able to forget. Just get out of our house. I will. Only give me a few days. Think of your mother. She's the only one I am thinking of. Take you a few days, take them, and then get out. All right. But no matter what I've done, you know yourself we're something special. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie. Who is it? Oh, Jack. You're still angry with me? No. Oh, you've been crying. No, it's just... No. Like to go for a ride with a cop, Charlie? I... Yes, thank you. Yeah. Still broken up about last night? You don't get over it fast. Not a thing like that. Is there anything you can tell me? Anything about your uncle? No. Have you found out anything else? No, they're still working in the East on the other suspect. But you've got to understand, Charlie, you may be living in the same house with a killer, a ruthless murderer. Uncle Charles. I'm sorry, really sorry. Jack, I... I'm trying to do what you said. About getting him out of town? Oh, that, that's the best way. Then you can be sure. I think he's going to leave. you let me know when. Yes, I'll let you know. That's our bargain, isn't it? I'll let you know, and you won't arrest him here. It has to be that way, Charlie. Until we know for sure, you won't be safe. Not you or any of your family. My mother. She won't know why he's leaving. She wants him to stay more than anything else in the world. This way, she'll never know. Wouldn't you want it like that? Yes. It's so strange. From the time you're a little girl, you love somebody. And then suddenly... Oh, Charlie. Charlie. Come here. I loved him. I loved him so much. Charlie, you you seem pretty sure he's the man we want. No. I'm just scared, that's all. I'm scared. If he gets away from us, he'll go on. Jack, please. I'm sorry, but my job. I know. I'm so tired. I slept for almost 24 hours, but I'm so tired. Shall I take you home now? Yes, please. Take me home, Jack. To my home. I'm in the kitchen, Mom, doing the dishes. Charlie, that young man, Mr. Graham, he's on the porch. Is he? Awfully early to come calling. But I guess he wants to ask you some questions in connection with the survey. All right, Mom. Oh, look at that. Your uncle didn't even finish his orange juice. Don't you go bothering him now. He's preparing his speech for tonight. Oh, that woman's club. My, they'll be so impressed. Charlie? What do you want? I was up early this morning. I listened to the news on the radio. I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Good news, Charlie. Your young man, I expect he's waiting out there to tell you about it. Leave me alone. Oh, oh, oh. nothing to worry about, Charlie. Charlie, I've got something to tell you. About him? Uh, where can we be alone? Oh, the garage is all right. What is it? I'm going away. I'm leaving Santa Rosa. Does that mean... It means I've been taken off the job. Your uncle is clear. How does that sound? Clear? The other man, the one in the East. It's already in the news. They got him, the Merry Widow murderer. Did he... Did he confess? He's dead. Oh. Look out for your clothes. There's a lot of grease in the garage. Charlie, you... You're taking it mighty calmly. Sometimes oh. I'm like that. Well, I'm surprised. It happened in Maine, at Portland. He was running away from the police at the airport. He ran into the propeller of an airplane. Cut him to pieces. That's dreadful. Dreadful? A murderer is dead. He won't kill anymore. As long as he was free, he'd have killed again and again. That's the kind of person he was. I haven't told you about him, Charlie, because... Well, I wanted to spare you that when your uncle was a suspect. 
But he married women for their money, old women, widows. And then he murdered them. He... It's done with, Jack. Don't talk about it. Charlie, if you knew, if you knew for sure it was your uncle, what would you have done? I think... I think I would have tried to keep it a secret from everyone. Even from you, Jack. I would have forced him to go away. Well, then it's a good thing your uncle isn't the merry widow murderer. If you had done that, threatened him, he probably would have killed you too, you know. No. I don't think so. Why not? Because I don't think he'd do that. We've, we've been too close to each other. He would have gone away. Oh, well, it's all ended happily, hasn't it? Except that I'm the one who's going away. Will it be soon? Yeah, right now, right away. I just stopped off to see you. Do you think you'll be coming back? I hope so. So do I. Oh, look. There's Mother's glove on the garage floor. She's always losing something. And someday she'll be losing you. You'll be getting married to a clerk or a doctor or a policeman. Funny. I hadn't thought about getting married. What's that? Oh, that's the garage door. Guess there's a breeze. Uh, I'm glad we met, Charlie. And I'm sorry it was like this with fear and worry. It's all over now. I suppose it couldn't ever really happen that someday you'd uh, tell your father, you know, about marrying someone. The detective, I mean. I don't know. I just don't know, Jack. I love you, Charlie. I know it's no time to tell you now. Do you mind? I don't mind. And you? I'd like us to be friends. We are friends. Nothing more? Maybe. I need time to think. Shall I come back, Charlie? Oh, yes. Please come back. Look, Charlie, think about it. Perhaps, perhaps it won't take you too long. I'm stopping in San Francisco for a few days. I'll be at the St. Francis if you want the me to... The St. Francis, I'll remember. Oh, that darn garage door. It's always slamming shut. I can't open it. Well, here. Let me try. There. Well, well, what are you two look at locking yourselves in the garage for? Hello, <laughs> Mr. Oakley. I was just saying goodbye to your niece. Uh -huh. Leaving us? Yes, I'm all finished here, so I'll uh, say goodbye to you, too. Well, let's do it right here on the lawn. No use taking chances on the garage again, huh? <laughs> right. But I'll be back. Not uh, business, but I I'll be back. Oh? Oh, Charlie, is it? She's a fine girl, this one. The thing I love most in all the world. Are you driving, Jack? Oh, yes. Uh, I better get started. Still no hard feelings about the picture. Forgotten. Good. Rights of man, you know. Freedom. Uh, we'll have a talk about freedom someday, Mr. Oakley. Don't forget me, Charlie. I won't. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jack! He can't hear you, Charlie. When are you leaving? Oh, Charlie, that other business is all over. I asked when you were leaving. Oh, I'd like to forget all that. We're happy here. You can't stay. But I'm going to, you see. I like it here. This is what I want. A new life. People who know me and respect me. I can be so very happy here, Charlie. Uh, I'll expose you if you try to stay. No, Charlie. What would, what would that do to your mother? No. And who'd believe me? A silly little girl babbling about a newspaper clipping in a ring you don't even have anymore. You have it. Me? I gave it to you. I've got to stay. Understand that, Charlie. I'm going to stay. I don't want you here, Uncle Charlie. I'm warning you. Go away, or I'll kill you myself. Think I'll pass muster at the women's club? Huh? Oh, you look very handsome, mm. Charles. And so does Joe. Emmy, I'll never know why you have to soak my handkerchiefs in lavender. Oh. I'll be waiting outside, Mommy. All right, dear. 
Oh, I'm so proud of my two men. Oh, here you are, Charlie. I'm ready, Mother. Do you have your speech, Charles? Yep, polished to perfection. No, oh, they were all ready. But I don't know how we'll manage in the coupe. Oh, now, don't you worry about that. I've already phoned for a taxi. Charlie and I can go in your car, and the rest of you take the cab. Now, Charles. Oh, it's all arranged. Right, Charlie? Why don't you go in the cab? Well, I'd like you to hear my speech. Don't you want to help? Mother, I want you to come with us in the car. But, Charlie... Why don't you go out and start the car, Charlie? Please, Mother, I want you to come in the car. to the garage and opened the doors. The car motor was running and the exhaust was a strangling cloud. I tried to turn the motor off, but the car doors were locked. I began to cough, and as I turned to leave the garage, the door slammed tight. Please! Can somebody hear me? Suffocating. Oh, please, please. <coughs> Mother. Father. Uncle Charlie, Uncle Charlie. Dickory, Dickory, no. And now I'm dying. It's like a deep, smooth syrup all around me. The concrete floor of the garage isn't hard anymore. It's soft. Soft. Like a bed. Like my bed. Charlie. Charlie. Mom? Oh, thank God. Thank God. Joe. Charles, she's conscious. She's all right. Charlie, we were so frightened. Oh, yes, young Charlie. You couldn't leave us, could you? My room. I was in the garage. I I couldn't get out. The door was jammed, dear. Your Uncle Charlie opened it. Uncle Charlie? Did he hear me in there? No, dear. I did. You're lucky your father had such sharp ears. Get away from me. We haven't even had time to call Dr. Phillips. I'm going to... No, Mother. I'm all right. I'll get up. I... Oh. What is it, Charlie? My ankle. I... I must have sprained it trying to get out of the garage. Your mother will call Dr. Phillips. He'll no, Pops. My... My ankle will be all right tomorrow. And now... I... I'm just tired. I want to rest. Besides, you've still got the woman's club. We couldn't leave you now, dear. Of course not, Charlie. I insist it'll mean so much to Mother. I'm all right now. Honest, I am. I don't know. Is that what you want, Charlie? That's what I want. Oh, please, please... Hurry, oh, please. Yes? Miss Newton? Yes, this is Miss Newton. On your call to the St. Francis in San Francisco, Mr. Jack Graham is not in the hotel. It is known when he'll return. Don't they have any idea? I'm sorry, miss. Well, please leave a message for him to phone Miss Charlotte Newton in Santa Rosa. It's very important. Very well. Thank you. Too bad, Charlie. Uncle Charlie. Oh, he isn't in, is he? What are you doing here? You should be at the... The woman's club? Well, the family's there. And I forgot the notes for my speech. Take them and leave me alone. No, Charlie. I won't leave you alone. Oh, no, I can't. Not with you knowing what you know. You see, I've got to stay here, Charlie. Everything I want is right here. But I can't stay, can I, as long as you want me to leave? You threaten me and force me, and I can't have that, Charlie. Huh? Not, don't try to run away. You can't, your ankle. Uh, no, don't scream. I don't want you to scream. Not my Charlie. I want you to understand. 
You're a smart girl, Charlie. The garage this afternoon, well, that failed, and now we have to do it this way. Oh, I... I've suffered so much, Charlie. That's why I can't bear to hear you cry. You won't cry, will you? Because there won't be anybody to hear you. And all the neighbors are at the women's club. Now, Charlie, let me lift you up. What? What are you going to do? You must understand something. You see, I love you. You were my delight, Charlie. My favorite niece, and I was proud of you. Now I have to do this, and I, I want to hold you gently so I won't hurt you. You weigh hardly anything. Uncle Charlie, please, see, please. See, no, no. Look, we're at the top of the stairs. I'll drop you over the railing. And if you're not dead, Charlie, I'll do it again and again until you are dead. And then I can stay here. And you won't be able to hurt me anymore. I never wanted to hurt you, Charlie. Never. No, no, I won't. Let oh, don't go. fight, Charlie. Oh, please, oh, don't struggle. There. Don't. Oh! My eyes! Your fingers! My eyes, Charlie! She doesn't know. She'll never know. She'll think it was all an accident. Please, Jack, hurry. Charlie? Charlie? Mother, a terrible thing has happened. A terrible thing. So ends our screen director's playhouse presentation of Shadow of a Doubt and two fine performances by Betsy Drake and Cary Grant. Next week, the screen director's playhouse is privileged to adapt a motion picture distinguished by one of the rare screen performances of a most unusual actress. The story for the first time on the air is Alfred Hitchcock's remarkable Lifeboat. And recreating her original role will be Taluda Bankhead. And co-starring with her will be one of Hollywood's most swiftly rising young stars, the popular Jeff Chandler. Universal International Pictures, now releasing The Milkman, starring Donald O'Connor and Jimmy Durante. Betsy Drake may currently be seen in the Warner Brothers comedy Pretty Baby. Included in tonight's cast were High Aberback, Lois Corbett, Anne Whitfield, Gail Bonney, and Earl Ross. Shadow of a Doubt was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. The screen director's playhouse is directed by Bill Karn and produced by Howard Wiley. This is James Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Thursday night when we present Screen Director's Playhouse, stars Tallulah Bankhead, Jeff Chandler, production Lifeboat, director Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy Savage, the Friday night feature of the five-show festival. 
That wonderful show, Duffy's Tavern, returns tomorrow on NBC.